Uh, last time you guys were in here, you were to have completed the watershed uh, presentations. How many people in here are actually complete? Raise your hands. Finished with narration. Oh, no. <laughs> the disappointment flows. I'm going to give you this period. You have got to be complete. Standards-focused project-based learning really does have some sort of structure. You just don't turn students loose in the classroom to do whatever they might like want to do. This isn't short. pure discovery yeah, learning. It's yeah, really a method of uh, structuring projects, and you very carefully guide students through the whole process. Have you done the narration yet? Um, we haven't recorded. You're going to get to that today? Mm -hmm. I'm try. Okay, let's see slide three. I'm afraid too many teachers think going into this, well, this will be pretty easy, you know. We're, we're turning so much of this over to the kids. It's pretty easy, but some days it's like herding cats. The second I said that we'd be ready, uh, yeah. it broke. <laughs> the sound studio froze and we can't get it working. What should we do? <laughs> There's just a lot going on, and if you don't keep track of the groups, they'll shut down on you. They'll get behind, then they get overwhelmed, then they shut down. If you have four or five teams operating in your classroom, in the course of a 60 or 90 minute period, it's very useful, for example, to have a member of that team come and report to you at the end of that period, or to have them stand up and report to the whole group. However you organize it is not so important as the fact that you do have some way that you can check in on the process with kids and know where they are. Take your temperature probe, and let's have one group do the pool and one group do the Riffley area up there. It helps to think in terms of being a manager of a process. Students and projects tend to be out of their seats. They tend to be working in teams. Uh, occasionally, they're off in the computer lab or down at the library doing research. It's a, it's a much more uh, yeah, active environment. So your management skills here are really important. Let me see this slide. And there were a total of 12 benchmarks in this project, uh, all laid out ahead of time with the dates. Um, and they have to be signed on on each successive step before they can be signed off on the next step. I keep a paper version of all the groups and all the benchmark numbers, and I keep it on a clipboard. So about halfway through the project, it becomes really valuable to sit down with each group, and they can see all of the other groups in the school and where they stand according to the other, other kids. So if they're, they have more marks than anybody else, they know they're doing really well, and that's really motivating. At the same time, if they see all these marks on the yeah, clipboard, and they're way back here and have a bunch of blanks compared to everybody else, that also is very motivating. Another effective management tool is to constantly reflect on the okay, process. So as we usually do, we do a quick debrief at the end of a project, and we'll run through what worked during the project, what didn't work during the project, one of the best findings in educational research is reflection is equated with retention. That is, when you think about what you've done and you think about what you learned, it's much more likely to stay with you. How many of you realize it takes more than just class time to really put out a quality project? I, th I think this is probably the biggest lesson you guys have to learn. Uh, for next year. You can't do an adequate job if you only work in class. If you don't put in the outside time, you will not be able to pull off a real quality product or presentation at the end. What worked in the course of this project? Well, I personally like working in groups better than by myself because I feel I get more done. And I think this watershed project has been like the biggest example of how it's good to work together in groups and how successful it can be. I would actually have to say that our group didn't work very well together and that we didn't manage our time wisely and we could have been more organized and it seemed like we worked better by ourselves than within the group. So a process of reflection is really useful for managing and organizing the project as well as to get students used to the idea of looking at their own progress and seeing what they've learned.